mabilis lumaki yung aking watch time ako rin nagtataka <laughs> pero share ko lang sa inyo yung uh, ginagawa ko sa aking youtube channel para matapos ko yung watch hours na 40k 4k okay so unang una uh, paano ba natin ma-achieve yung watch hours okay so kung papansin ninyo sa mga video konti lang naman ng video ko pero pansinin nyo meron dyan 1 hour 1 hour meron dyan 2 uh, hours lang naman ng 1 hour video ko pero 1 hour at 2 hours okay so yan lang naman yung mga video ko at uh, yan lang yung pinapanood ko para lumaki yung aking watch time ang ginagawa ko uh, pinapanood ko yung 1 hour hours. video na yan at 2 hours tapos okay. giniloop ko yan so so yan lang naman yung mga video ko at so nanonood uh, yan lang yung pinapanood ko yung browser nito para lumaki yung aking watch time yung YouTube channel ko ng video ang ginagawa ko, ko so uh, pinapanood ko yung 1 hour hours. Siyempre, hindi mo gagamitin yung hours. main Tapos, account mo. Gagamitin okay. mo yung ko. account yeah. ng iba. So, so yan lang naman yung mga video ko. So, uh, pero ikaw rin may ari nun. <laughs> okay. So, ganun gagawin mo. Ilulup mo yan. Ilulup mo yung video. Tapos, magbubukas ka ng mga maraming maraming browser. Okay. So, magda-download ka ng uh, apat na browser o kaya depende sa capacity ng uh, computer mo kung kaya, ilan yung kaya niyang browser na ilo. okay so magda-download ka na okay. so sa akin uh, apat na browser uh, o kaya kaya niya mag depende sa apat. capacity ng uh, computer mo kung kaya ilan yung pa. kaya niyang browser na ilo. okay so magda-download ka na okay. so sa akin uh, apat na browser uh, o kaya kaya niya mag Depende sa apat. capacity ng uh, computer mo kung oh. kaya browser na ilo. Okay, so magda-download ka okay. na. So sa akin, uh, apat na browser uh, o kaya kaya niya mag Depende sa apat. capacity ng uh, computer mo kung oh. kaya. Wala naman akong ginagawang browser na ilo. Okay. Ibang, ibang ginagawang kababalaghan. Ang ginagawa ko lang. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng Sling Magic Wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung Magic Wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa, sa isang color dito sa at uh, uh, just one lang. click lang ng ating one pwede na natin tanggalin yung select nyo sa uh, isang color dito at, sa at uh, okay. uh, just one yun lang. click lang yun ng ating one yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one tikita nyo naman yung pagkakakat nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makikita ang hita atin pati sa buhok yan so okay so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari okay yan so pwede namang yan ang gamitin natin 50 pero so, mayroon pa akong nakikita ang hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang buhok So, ang ganda din is 100 talaga. Toast, Anderson! And cut! Mark that one done in monday.com. I run a business. 100. Tapos. That's cool! That's so cool! Today, we're at a UV printer factory. They're giant, and they can print on just about anything. Everything from flip-flops to cell phone and tablet cases. Yeah. Even luggage. 
I have been fascinated by UV printers for a while now, and I've been looking for the opportunity to do a video about them. I recently got connected with BestJet, so I want to thank them for making this video possible and giving me access to their factory. Let's go see how they make these machines, and then I convince them to turn me loose on one of them to see what I can do. Hi, Iska. And Wang, thank you so much for showing me around today. My pleasure. So my understanding is that over here we've got a fully finished machine, yep. and, the, and it's sort of being calibrated in the last steps. Yep. But let's go to the start and look yep. like when, it, when you first start building up a machine, right. what's the very first step? So this is the frame, it's basically what we get. Uh, all the machine we build start from here. And so you send this out to a welding shop right. that, that does all the welding of the big steel so this is just like a big sturdy frame right. you can put a heavy machine on that's not going to torque or move around or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this side, this is just putting the side and the side of the side of the side of the side. Right, okay. And so this is the, the linear assembly that will move the whole print head back yes. and forth. And then I noticed, I noticed this table has all these holes in it. Okay, when you print something quite light, something like a paper, and when you print, when you put on this, it's um, it's very easy to get moved when you're printing, which yeah. is not not be good for printing. Right. But when you have the uh, vacuum with the vacuum, and then we suck the air and make sure the media stand firmly on the surface on the flat pad. So it holds the paper in place. Yes. This machine we have uh, four different sections, ah. and if you print something smaller one, so you don't have to uh, open the whole area for the section. And this is a carriage. We are going to install the carriage where the print head and the uh, controllers where we have it to be installed here. This yes. is the actual printer. Yes. And then it's also where the UV lights are, right? That's yes. the UV part of UV printing. They keep yeah. screwing and unscrewing various things. Okay, now for the next step, we're going to do the, all the wiring here. How do these guys know where to run all these wires? Because <laughs> I'm looking at this and I'm so looking nice. and going, this, I don't... 是这样子的,首先呢,我们所有的每一块都是在那边已经加工好的,其实在这边仅仅是代表连线,这边所需要做的工作只是要把这个线头连到,对应的我们做的。But how do they know which ones to connect? 其实在每一条线上到时候它会穿上线标的。And so, so let's go see where you guys are making those cables. Yep, yeah. sure. Now we are the, uh, the boards, uh, second the sub, where the, our sub parts is assembled. These are for, for wire stripping, right? yeah. for taking wire the stripping, outside yeah. of the wire off. Yes, yes. I've seen these before, but I've never actually seen one run. Oh, that's cool. Okay, you can decide how much of the uh, strip you want to cut. Like how long, yeah. How long. And then how long the whole wire is. You can, you can, you can set whatever you want. You can figure it out. <laughs> I like it. This is so much faster than the way I do it. <laughs> That's cool. So this is for, for crimping the terminals on yeah. for connectors, right? Yes. <laughs> That's so easy. Can he show us these go in another connector? Oh yeah, that's totally awesome. This is how to create a, a cable like a professional. So, among my understanding is that this is the room where you're creating a lot of the sub-assemblies as well. You're creating, like here are your front panels for your machine. It seems like you guys have a ton of, of sub-assemblies. Like how many sub-assemblies are you making in here that then go downstairs? So she has to know how to do a lot of different things. Yes, she does. <laughs> so they all have specialties. Yeah, they all are specialties. good in different pieces. Yes. That's cool. So this this is your inventory. You looks like you've got sub tanks here. Yep, that's sub tank. And then these are your main tanks. Yeah, it's main 
and these yeah. these are your front panels, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, front panel. All oh, right. Oh, this side. Those are pretty nice. Yeah, sweet. And they're all cabled up, ready to go, ready to go on a machine. Yeah, yeah. ready to go. Awesome. I noticed we came upstairs, and I have a question for you. Yeah. These machines are huge, and we're on the second floor. Yep. How do they get up here? There's no freight elevator, right? Yeah. So we use a forklift. Down use from a here. forklift. Yep. Do you want to see? Yeah, I want to see it. <laughs> oh, God. It doesn't drive as fast once it's got something on it. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Now we can do, we, we, we have been installing all the parts you've seen here to install into the carriage. So now, as you can see, now he's doing the wiring for the, um, the parts. Now this is for the uh, negative pressure. It's where you create the negative pressure. It's for the print head. To, to pull the ink through. To hold the ink, exactly. Oh, to hold the ink up. And then these are the boards where the actual print heads will get installed, right? Yes, exactly. And I noticed there are a whole bunch of cutouts here for print heads. How many will this machine get? Basically, we installed with four heads. This is where we install the uh, UV lamp. Okay? This is the lamp on both sides. As you can notice, there are two different UV lamps. This is a smaller one, this is a larger one. And this is for the shiny part, which is the glossy part, to cure the varnish part. So Why? it can be installed on both sides. Why do you need a different UV lamp for varnish as opposed to... Very good question. Uh, the, when you're printing the varnish and the clear, it's, it's as a little... Keep the change. Kia, <gasps> kia. Mm. My flight, putang at marami ng adobs yan. So, para sa akin, okay. Sarot lang. Tip ko, marami bang travel sa mga bibili nito. Be a mariahero, they're great deals. Book na. Welcome back to Guga Foods, everybody. My name is Guga. Today, I am going to dry age every single meat I can find. Check it out. Before starting, I want you to understand what dry aging is. I like to use a special membrane, which is called Umai Dry. It allows me to dry age at home without any special equipment. And all there is to do is to put it inside of this membrane, set it in a cooling rack, and put it on my regular refrigerator for the desired time to dry age. In essence, what dry age does is it extracts moisture from the meat. It also tenderizes the meat, and it develops a unique flavor that I enjoy. And the end results sometimes vary, most of the time with a more intense flavor, and after dry aging several steaks, including the most expensive steak in the world, which was Japanese Wagyu A5, my subscribers always ask me to dry age every type of meat. So today, by their request, I am dry aging everything I can find. So let's begin. We start off with shrimp. I have no idea what's about to happen, but I'm excited to find out. For preparation, I kept it pretty simple. I made sure they were all deveined and also removed all the shells. And in most, I try to keep the tails intact. As you'll be seeing throughout this video, the only thing left to do is to put it in the bag and make sure that I set all of them to the edge. That way, when I'm using my vacuum sealer, I try to remove most of the air out. It does not matter how much you try, all of the air will not come out. And that's okay. Now, there's left to do is to put it on a cooling rack to make sure the air circulates all the way around and put it on my refrigerator to dry age for 15 days. Once the time was up, this is what it looks like. It is paper thin. I don't think there's anything left. I mean, check this out. But let's open it and check it out what we got. And once I did, this is what it looks like. It doesn't smell fishy. It doesn't smell like shrimp. It actually has no smell at all. And it feels like rubber, like hard rubber. Once I split it open with my hands, check it out. There's nothing left. Remember that we took all the shells out. Wow. I mean, if I take it apart and put something like this, look at it. You can make a sculpture out of it. Since it's so dry, there's no smell, it is a perfect sculpture. But hey, we gotta try it and see how it tastes. Once I cut it up and check it out what it looks like. There's almost nothing there. But once I tried it, it's terrible. Oh, it's like fishy and rubbery. I thought it was gonna be kind of like a chip. Nope. But what if I grab another piece and put some fire on it? So I took my torch and went to town. Cooking it a little bit might make it better. As you can see, after I was done with the torch, it's very dry. So I dunked it in olive oil and put a little bit of sea salt on top. That should make it better. Let's see. Nope, that is horrible. Nope, not for me. 
Absolutely not. Chicken breast. This might be one of the most consumed protein throughout the entire world. So everyone knows what chicken breast tastes like. And to be honest, this one got me a little nervous. But hey, it's an experiment and I'm gonna give it a go. Remember, do not try this at home. I'm still very curious to find out what will happen. So after putting it in the membrane and let it dry age for a total of 15 days, this is what I got. That, friends, is a dry age chicken breast. The most important thing to know if you had success is the smell. If it smells bad, throw it away. If it's a weird smell, throw it away faster. However, when I picked up this chicken breast and I took a sniff at it, it was fine. It did still smell a little bit like chicken, but not in a bad way. Some parts were soft just like Play-Doh. The thinner edges, however, was like a rock. Since the smell was not bad, it gave me confidence to trim it. And even though it was hard, it was manageable. And here's what it looks like inside. And after you take it out of the bag, if you smell it and it does not smell bad, then you are 90% okay. And by trimming it and taking another smell, you'll be able to tell if it's bad. And this one did not ring any alarm. But once I was done with the trimming, this is what I got a very large amount of unused chicken and a very tiny piece for me to cook. I mean, holding it in my hand, guys, this is very little. And it's kind of sticky, which is very interesting. And as I mentioned, no bad smell. I kept the seasoning simple with a little bit of oil just to make sure that my seasoning will stick. Then season it with salt and freshly ground. Okay. So, yeah. All right. so Need a professional website? I created one for our startup using Wix. Let me show you how I did it. First, go to Wix.com. Our startup is constantly evolving, and we need a website that can do the same. We use Wix Video to showcase product demos so users can learn all about our app. Let the adventures begin. With Wix Blog, we can share industry news and updates about important releases. It really helps us establish ourselves as an authority in our field. Awesome. We're looking for early adapters to beta test our next release. So, I'm sending an email marketing campaign to my contacts list. Every element is completely customizable. This really delivers. In this industry, you gotta stay ahead of the competition. Thanks to Wix professional SEO tools, we can make sure that we rank high on the search and attract new users. Wow. This is really gonna put us on the map. Go to Wix.com and create your professional website today. This was me right after I started my business. You see, starting my business, that was easy. But maintaining it, that was chaos. We tried a combination of apps, software, and other solutions just to find out that these solutions were actually adding to our workload. And that's when I found Bitrix24, a free all-in-one business solution designed to make running my business easier. Bitrix24 lets me manage my team, projects, and clients all from a single platform. Since we started using Bitrix24, the chaos is gone and I can get back to the best things in life. Oh, and did I mention Bitrix24 is free? So, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, select nyo sa... Ground black pepper. I pan seared it until it was fully cooked. And as you can see, it's so thin that it only took a few seconds. And there we have it, fully dry aid chicken breast. And once I cut it open, check it out. It looks quite dry. And the smell that is coming through is very interesting. It smells like pork crackling. It's a nice smell. But let's see how it tastes. Huh, I'll tell you one thing, it does not taste like chicken. It is weird. I would say a mix of chicken and fish. By no means is it bad, but it is dry. So dry, I had to take a juice break. And after lubricating my throat, I had an idea. I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but hold on a second. Let's just throw this inside of the orange juice and dunk it real good to make it nice and moist and taste it. Oh yeah, that's way better. That's what I'm talking about. Again, don't try this at home. Bacon. We all know what bacon tastes like. 
I'll tell you one thing, bacon is amazing. It is just basically candy. That is how good it is. But I have no idea what dry aging is gonna do to it. However, I'm super pumped to find out. So after putting it in the membrane, I let it sit on my refrigerator to dry age for a total of 35 days. And once I did, this is what I got. It completely changed color as expected. Hey, but we can't really tell what this looks like, so I gotta remove it out of the membrane. And once I did that, this is what I was left with. It smells wonderful. It still smells like bacon, but kind of like cooked bacon. But hey, I'm excited to find out what we got inside. And as I did my first cut, whoa, what is that? It looks like Wagyu beef. And the smell that is coming through is just amazing. Like I said, it smells like cooked bacon. And I can't wait to find out what it's gonna taste. So I quickly sliced it in small pieces. And you already know that bacon has already plenty of salt, so there's no need for seasoning. Then I threw it in the pan to pan fry it. And I cooked it until it was nicely golden brown. And the funny thing is that it cooks a lot faster than regular bacon. It seems like the fat just melts very fast. And reminds me of Japanese Wagyu A5 when I'm cooking it. But once I was done, check this out. <laughs> you tell me that doesn't look good come on now i wish you could smell it it is a wonderful smell but hey the important thing is how it's gonna taste and when i took my first bite oh, yes a nice strong flavor of bacon it did not change the profile of the taste it just became better bacon oh that's good this one is gonna go into the empty plate club this is pork tenderloin as the name says it's very tender but it's also very lean after putting it in the bag setting on my cooling rack i decided to dry it for a total of 20 25 days. Once the time was up, I quickly removed it from the bag, laid it down on my cutting board, and this is what it looks like. That to me looks exactly like beef. These little white parts got me a little worried, I thought it was mowed. But then again, when I took a closer look at it, it wasn't. This one is looking good. And when I smelled it, I didn't find anything wrong with it. It's interesting that the top part lost way more moisture than the bottom. So I quickly took my knife, sliced it open, and this is what I got. Whoa, that looks good. As you can see, it's just like beef and perfectly dry aged. Sometimes when you open it up, you have has a weird funky smell however this one doesn't whenever you're dry aging this is exactly what you're looking for so i moved on to the next step which is remove all the pellicles they are hard they don't taste good and that's something that you should always get rid of and i am a true believer on not being cheap remove all of it when i was done this is what i got left all the pellicles on the left and the good stuff on the right yes the yield is not that great holding it on my hand i can already tell this is gonna be something good the meat is extremely tender it also smells wonderful remind Reminds me of bacon. I know it sounds weird, but it does. And check this out, it's just basically falling apart. And if it's doing that before it's cooked, oh boy, I can already tell it's gonna be good. So I quickly season it with salt and pepper, nothing else. Pan fried it with a little bit of oil and make sure that all edges got a nice crust. I mean, if you take a look at this, you will never be able to tell that this was actually dry aged first. But once I sliced that open, check this out. It looks so juicy. And as I take a bite, yes, that is phenomenal. It's slightly stronger than fresh, but in a very very nice way. I mean, check it out. This one was a success. Let me see if I can cut it by myself with my fork. Yes, that is tender. Very nice. Oh, I like that. And here we have salmon. It is one of my favorite fishes to eat. Smoked, dry aged, or even raw as a sushi. Salmon is always good. And you already know the drill. After putting it in the membrane, I put it on my refrigerator so that it will sit for a total of 20 days. Once the time was up, I quickly removed it from the refrigerator and this is what I got. That color is very interesting. It almost looks translucent. At the same time, it does not feel like a rock like the other ones. All right, enough playing with it. Let's open it up and see what we got. And once I've done all of that, oh boy, this is oily. But at the same time, take a look at that color. It still smells like salmon, but nothing overpowering that's a good sign all right let's cut it open and see what we got and after my very first slice whoa check that out it looks like perfection to me however i will say one thing it is extremely oily i'm not quite sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing after i remove the skin i notice the bloodline is very strong and it also feels kind of sticky and gooey i say you know what that's gotta go and when i was done trimming this is what i got I mean, come on, doesn't that look like perfection? Very nice and intensive color, and I can't wait to find out how it's gonna taste. I kept the seasoning simple with only salt and freshly ground black pepper, nothing else. I threw in some oil and cooked my fish into my preferred doneness. You would never be able to tell that this was actually dry aged first. And when I try to cut it open, oh, come on. And when I take my first bite, oh, yes, that is phenomenal. It is difficult to put it in words. It still tastes like salmon, but just better, super oily, concentrated flavor. And to be honest with you, I don't even want to talk, I just want to eat. That was awesome. Ground beef.
I like to grind my own meat and it was done 90% lean which I used sirloin and 20% fat. After putting it in the membrane and let it dry age for 35 days, this is what I got. It is a solid rock, zero gaps in between and to my surprise it is exactly what I'm looking for when dry aging. And when I opened it up in my first slice, whoa, check that out. You tell me if that does not look like a Japanese Wagyu A5 beef. Did I just make the cheapest Wagyu in the world? That looks amazing! But hey, I'm wondering if I can actually make a steak out of this. So I quickly trimmed all the pellicles and when I was done, this is what I got. Oh, I'm excited for this one. I kept the seasoning simple with salt and freshly ground black pepper, nothing else. Hey! Hi! Welcome home! Oh. Can you smell the incense? Mm, relaxing. What's all this? Say hello to Pumpkin! Isn't she cute? <gasps> so remember when I said not to use purple bricks? Yeah, we said we'd have else. So after quickly pan searing and trying to keep the temperature at 135 degrees Fahrenheit internally, this is what I got. That does not look like a steak. It looks like a croquette. The edge is super crispy and it held together like a champ. And once I sliced it open, wow, that is juicy friends. Remember, I always grind my own beef. So it gives me confidence not to have to cook it all the way through. I mean, check it out. One part is a little bit overcooked on the top, but the middle is kind of medium rare, which is what I'm looking for every time I cook a steak. And when I tried it, yes, <laughs> that is good. It's crunchy, juicy in the middle. It has a very mild dry age flavor. It's So welcome back everybody. Today we're going to get into some of these beehives and see if we can find some honey that's ready to extract. Now I don't usually like to do this until June or July. I like to usually wait until all of the honey is ripe and ready to go so I can just do this one time. But right now I've only got about a half of a pound of honey left on my table at the house so it's, it's almost an emergency. It's time to see if we can find some honey. Also if we go ahead and extract what's already there that gives the bees an opportunity to put more honey into the empty frames that we make for them. So let's go ahead and open up some of these hives and see what we can find. So yun guys, so napakadaling gamitin ang wand kapag ating subject ay may pantay na dito sa background. So, yun yung silbi ng wand. So the odds are good that I won't find anything or at least not any drawn comb on this topmost box. But we got to get it out of the way first before we can go in, 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 into any of the lower frames. There's some of them up here but we're going to have to go lower to find anything useful. So again. Not a lot going on in this box. Select Let's just take a frame out and see what they're doing. So you can see, I hope you can see that at least, they have got a good bit of nectar stored in these frames, but it's nowhere near capped. I believe that there might be promising in the next box though. Getting some weight to it. Ah! 
ันตอกกินนิดเดียวเฮียเฮียไม่ฟลายฟุตังอัดมาไม่นั่งอัดอนจันสลดลังติบโก้มาทำให้บางทรับินส์มาบีบินนี่ตัวบีอาบาริเฮโน่ they're great deals บุกนาเอ้ยฮ่าฮ่าลิทโอเคสุดยอดอัตโนมัติทั้งกันเลยยงบักรอนนี่ยเรดเนชั่นพาราเป็นไวท์คลีร์นักคลีร์ยงคันยัง background at uh, pwede na tayo mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire so they're getting real close on that frame but it's not quite done either we'll set it to the side getting very close on that one but not quite The good rule of thumb is not to take these frames. So that's actually still got brood in it. The good rule of thumb is to not take these frames until 80% of those cappings are capped. The reason that a lot of these are still open is because what the bees do is when they bring nectar back to the hive, they have to dry that nectar down to a certain moisture content. And when it hits a certain moisture content, that's the point when it becomes honey. And if you extract, man, that is close. If you extract too much open nectar, your honey will actually end up fermenting because the moisture content is way too high. All right, see, I, I'm, I'm going to take this frame right here, the stick in there. Because that right there, I suspect, is dry enough. On this side, you're looking at 95% cap. So we'll shake the bees off of this and put this to the side. So I'm not a commercial beekeeper. And the reason that I say that is because most commercial beekeepers, they will wait, of course. And I'll take entire supers and extract entire supers at a time. I'm going to take this one and extract just that side. The other side isn't quite ready. But commercial beekeepers will just take entire supers. I'm just a hobby beekeeper. I've got 10 hives. And that allows me the luxury of just kind of extracting around the brood nest and, you know, extracting whatever I find whenever I want to. We'll put these back together after we get done extracting. Drone. After we get done extracting, we'll come back and put those two frames back in there. So let's move on to the next box. Well, anyway, let's let's check the next. Um, let's check the lower box first. I expect all I'll find in here is some honey, but uh, quite a bit of brood. I get a lot of people asking me why I don't wear gloves to do this, and. Uh, the second I say that I get stung on my finger <laughs> but most of the time bees don't really sting your hands that bad only if you're jarring them around and knocking them around and making them angry will they resort to resort to that they really prefer faces and areas of areas of high contrast they like to get tangled up in hair And uh, now there's there's nothing happening on that except probably some eggs. So we're not gonna we're not gonna deal with that box at all. Let's put it back together and move on to the next hive. Just one click lang ng ating one. So di natin tanggalin yun. Bakal ba natin? Okay. Not a lot going on in this top box. I was actually in these hives this week earlier. I probably added this hive with this box and then. I'm not even sure. Maybe not. I can't remember. Man, that is so close. 
So close to being done. I actually, I think I'm probably going to take this frame. Since I'm just kind of doing a mini harvest. Yeah, that looks good. Since I'm doing a mini harvest and all of this honey is going to be for my own use, I'm going to go ahead and take this because they are on the verge of capping pretty much all of these frames. See these right here? Get her out of the way. See these right here? These are almost capped themselves. These are fully capped. And I would, I think I'm good with taking this frame. See what else we got in here. Oh yeah, that's good. Let me give you a closer look, and I'll show you what I'm show you what I'm talking about here. So I hope you can see this. These frames, I'm sorry, these cells in the middle right here are fully capped. That means that honey is 100% ripe and ready to go. But if we look at the other side, there are fewer cells capped. But the bees are working actively on capping a lot of these cells. You see right in here, those cells are almost capped. I feel fine taking this frame. I would consider it a dry frame. If it was honey that I was about to go sell, uh, I would probably not do that. But since it's for my own use uh, and it's just a small amount, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Yeah, we'll take that one too. That's probably all I'm going to get out of this. Well, hang on, let's check this frame. Yeah, that one right there. That one be, would be way... Oh, man. That one would be way too risky. See, that, that side looks... Yeah, that side doesn't look great. But that side is nowhere near ready. Let's check the next box. This wind is awful today. I hope it's not affecting the audio. I can kind of see down in there. I don't I don't know about this box. We'll pull a couple of frames just to see though. Yeah. So they've begun to fill that in. That was actually brewed not too long ago. And you can see over here that it's hard to see. Let's let's get a closer look and I'll show you all these this larva and these eggs and stuff these bees make a closer look here. So this is actually a really good frame to show you all the various stages of brood rearing in a hive. So you've got cap cells all in here. Some of those are probably getting ready to hatch. Some of them are almost capped. Some of them are, well, actually I'm not sure if they're getting ready to hatch or not, but they're older brood. Then you've got larva. See the little tiny worms down in here? So yun guys, so napakadaling gamitin ng one. Then you've got even so, smaller ating subject ay stages may and then right in here you got uh, eggs. Okay. So you know, silvina. You can one. see and I think with that one right in the middle there's actually maybe three eggs in there now. Sometimes that could denote a laying worker hive. In this case, it's not because you see all these other cells. They have one. Some of them have two in there. That could indicate that there is a queen in there that has just been mated. But I, this hive seems to have a very healthy queen. Sometimes when queens are brand new and they've just been mated, they will have trouble when they're just learning to lay eggs. But yeah, this is a good. This is a really good frame for y'all to see all this. These uh, these various stages of, of uh, brood rearing in a hive. So when I first started beekeeping, I used chemical treatments in my hives, and I actually marked the frames. Once I switched to organic, I marked the ones that I used the chemical treatments in. Now I'm not going to extract out of this hive because that's one of the frames that was used during the time that I was using chemical treatments. So we're not going to extract out of that. We will leave that for the bees for winter time. Unfortunately, that appears to be a pretty solid frame. Let's look at it and see what we're missing out on here. No, oh, that is a heavy, heavy frame. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Ah, that kills me that I've got to leave that. But it's all right, I'm not interested in eating pesticides. And honestly, that has probably broken down after all these years, and I wouldn't expect there to be traces left, but yeah, I'm not going to eat that stuff. Let's put this hive back together.
Pwede naman yan ang gamitin natin dito. Pero meron pa kung nakikita ng mga We'll definitely take that one. Tell you what, we'll take this one also. This one will be a good one. We can only extract half of it, but it'll be a good one to counterbalance the other half frame in the extractor that we got earlier. <laughs> this frame is a mess. You see, they've done pretty well on this side, but they haven't done anything on this side. And probably the reason for that is this other frame over here, they've just drawn it out farther into that other frame. We kind of made a mess out of it. I've said this on my videos before, but if you're a beekeeper and you do not have one of these Maxant frame lifter tools, you should seriously consider the investment. They're not, you know, they're really not that much more expensive than standard frame uh, hive tools, but my goodness, they are so much more convenient. They fit in my hand better. They do a better job, I think, personally. I mean, that's just my opinion, but I'm telling you, they are worth it. They are well worth it. Part na matilim para gawa natin yung mga It actually started drizzling when I was in that last hive and I'll tell you what, if it's one thing bees hate okay. is to be worked in the rain so we're kind of taking a risk here but it's okay. it's slacked okay. off, hopefully it'll stay gone Let's take that one too so here's something, let's get close. There was a very common question that I got last year that I think I can answer with this frame right here. Let's get close and let me show you. So one of the most common questions I got on last year's honey harvesting video was, why are some of these combs dark and why are some of them light? And a lot of people said, well, maybe it's because the honey is darker. And you know, I think that's actually a pretty good guess, but most commonly it's because the combs have been used for brood rearing instead of honey production, or simply they're just older. Older combs, they're not really dirty, but they're just stained because of more use. Now, this is a good example on this comb, because this frame, because we can see uh, both of the stages of, uh, of color on this. See on these edges right here, the comb on the tips, especially of these cells, is much newer, so it's nice and pretty white. But as you get towards the middle, you can see that these combs, or this wax, has been used much, much longer. This comb, i uh, sorry, this frame has been in use since 2014, it says on the top here. So you can see that a lot of these have gotten, uh, a lot of these cells have seen quite a bit of use. You see how much dark these cells are than these cells it's just simply the amount of use or what they have been used for but the honey is the same either way you see how nice and clear and light that honey is and if we go towards the middle it's pretty much the same color maybe a little bit darker some of this might actually be last year's honey I'm not sure but anyway bottom line is the honey doesn't really affect the color of the comb See, there we go. There's some of that nice light stuff. So I hope that hope that helps to answer that question. We got this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I see the problem here. Let's let's take this one off, and I'll show you all the, the problem that I've got on this one. I don't have to take it apart. Yeah, here we go. Watch this. So guys, this is what happens when, you, when you're sloppy and you don't put all your frames in your boxes properly. Check this out. They've just pretty well made a mess out of that. They're making honey in it though. So, can't ask for much more than that. I think I'll probably leave it and I can get cut comb honey out of that. Tell you what, I can't, I can't tell you how many people I get commenting on my last honey harvest video. They, they say, man, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I've got a test tomorrow. I really ought to be studying. What in the world am I doing here? You know, I should probably tell you to go study and do a good job in school, but how much more educational can you get looking at honeybees, harvesting honey? You'll be the envy of your classroom. I say... I say stay up and go to bed later. Oh man, they got a good laying pattern, a good brood pattern. Uh, really, really a beautiful, beautiful comb right here. You can't see it, but there's eggs all in here. Just gorgeous, but we're not going to get any honey out of it. But seriously, I'll go to sleep and do good in school and 
Eat your fruits and vegetables. So we're back in the shop, guys, where we're going to go ahead and extract this honey. But here's something interesting. My honey bucket's from last year, and it's been, what, 10 months, 9 months? I'm not sure. I guess I just left the honey in here last year that was left over. Now, this being honey, it's not going to go bad. So this honey is actually still good. It actually still tastes pretty good. But I'm going to wash it out because it's crystallized. And if you put new honey into honey that's already crystallized, the whole tub is going to crystallize much faster. So we don't want that. Let's get these cleaned up and we'll start extracting. Right, much, much better. And we have to dry these out really well because we don't want any extra moisture in this honey. Okay, so dito sa isa pang subject natin, yung same din yung gagawin natin. Okay. So yun guys, so napakadaling gamitin ng one kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na basta. Okay. So, yun yung silbi ng one ito. Subject. Okay, so just click the link to magic one, then Okay. 
And to drain your extractor. And at this point, well, I guess we're going to have to move the extractor through on down into the screen and it's been filtered out. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to go any farther with that. We'll take this out and uh, uh, see what we've got as far as honey goes. So let's see what we've got. This has been a very early honey harvest in my area. Here and slap the lid on it. And if you're going to store your wax like this for formal attire. kanyang background. So, yan. Kailangan pantay yung background niya. At uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos. Yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture. Okay? So, yan. So after that, ito ang mga nandito sa labas. Pwede mo nang i-delete. Yeah. Okay. So yan. Okay. So okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rush ID. Dito naman. Uh, same din. Uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin. Pero magtataka ka dito, balikat niya, merong sumama, no? So, pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80. Or mga 50. 70. Hindi pa rin. So, pwede mga 50 lang. Okay. Para sa akin, okay na yan. Okay? So, dito, sa isa pang subject natin, yung same din yung gagawin natin. Okay. So, yun guys. So, napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So, Yun yung silbi ng one ito. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na nating tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkakakat nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makikita ang kita atin pati sa buhok yan so okay so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari okay yan so pwede namang yan ang gamitin natin 50 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ang hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. Tapos, edit natin. Red. Delete. Okay. So, yan. Automatic. Tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para uh, maging white. Uh, clear na clear yung kanyang background. At uh, pwede na tayong mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire. Okay. Oops. kanyang background. So, yan. Kailangan pantay yung background niya. At uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos. Yung Automatic, tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para uh, maging white, clear na clear yung kanyang background. At uh, pwede na tayong mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire. Oops. ang kanyang background. So, yan. Kailangan pantay yung background niya. At uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos. Yung So, napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So, yun yung silbi ng wand na to. Need a beautiful logo for your brand? Wix Logo Makers got you covered. I'll show you how it works. First, go to Wix Logo I've been making copper cookware for 15 years. It's a passion for the process of creation and the tools of creation. Choosing a high performance tool that have soul and have meaning behind it, it changes kind of how you think about cooking. Copper has a great heat conductivity. The heat from that flame is going to be spread very quickly around the pan such that you've got a nice evenly heated cooking surface to cook at the same rate all around the pan. A great high performance tool. The copper that we're using here is pure copper. It's a great electrical conductor as well as a great heat conductor, so it's used in wiring. It's a very important metal in, in how we are existing these days. The big copper producers in the world are Chile. There's a lot of volcanic activity around there, so they do have a lot of mines and a lot of minerals. Our blank disc, which has been trimmed, cut out from the sheet of copper. So here we've got a spinning lathe we need to make this piece of copper push it over the tool so the tool becomes the inside. Every pan that we make has a different shaped tool. This tool is heavy, heavy, heavy steel and is only going to make that one pan. 
So the first thing I want to do is center the piece of copper and get it roughly centered here. The tooling itself is a two-man job. The first person is putting the pressure. The second man has a roller, is going back and forth on the work. It's very much a dance. You have to be in each other's heads to be able to spin this perfectly. Fernando has been working with me for about 10 years now, well entrenched in copper cookware. I'm a mechanical engineer undergrad, a master's degree in aerospace engineering, so real life rocket scientist. I love to build stuff. I'm, I love to create. Certainly the mechanical engineering is, is front and center. Going to move down one more set of holes, continuing the same process, but moving it closer and closer to the tool. Last little bit here. Very nice. Hold it. Hold it slow. Nice. And stop. Good. Let's change for the other roller. That was, that was good. These tools were all made specifically for spinning these very thick copper pans. Very hard steel. And we'll polish that because any little nick in there is going to mark the copper every single time it goes around. We're eight feet away from what we're working on. Over time, we added some extra strength here to really hold it nice and firm. Nice, and come up, nice. The other roller is more pointy and it wants to move the metal. The batter roller will get rid of some of these lines and make it more smooth. Nice, and down. Excellent. Nice. A little practice makes perfect. Being that it's handmade, that those spinning lines aren't like a, a press where it was just pressed into this shape with um, hydraulic press. Very different way of manufacturing. So this tool here is going to be locked in with this bolt has a little knife on the edge to cut the pan to height. And we need a little cutting oil on the tool to help keep it cool. We'll usually finish the outside of the pan and we'll use a number of different sandpaper. In an artisan fashion, every piece is going to be slightly different than the next. I was on a vacation in France. My wife and I found this huge stock pot and she looked at it and said, I love it, but look at the inside. And it was green. She said, I'm not going to cook in that. If we buy it, you're going to have to fix it. That was the pan that started the whole thing. I brought it home and read about what I needed to do, tried fixing it, and I think I tried that thing seven, eight times. And finally the art of it kind of clicked in. I put a little ad out there, people started sending me their pans, and I started finding these amazing pieces coming back. And I really didn't expect to find such history in it. And I said, I I want to be able to make stuff and sell stuff that is of this same quality. This is what it should be. This is what it was. Cast iron is a very poor conductor of heat. The heat from the pan is going to travel up the handle very slowly. What we're going to do next here is take our cast iron handle, which has been poured at a local foundry, and we're going to attach it with these rivets. We're using the piece of wood as a gauge to know that that's where the handle goes. Just one click lang ng ating one. natin tanggalin. We've got a rivet, three rivets. The first rivet is the middle one. So from here, we've got nice even shapes on all three rivets. They're laying nice and flat up against the pan, so no leaking. 
mayroon pa ako nakikita ang hindi maganda dun sa bantang part ng kanyang book. The genesis of my business being Du Parquet really came out of the restoration. I started learning about the brands that were coming back to me. The biggest player of the day was DH and Dem. Du Parquet, a gentleman named Uo, H-U-O-T, and Monuz, DH and Dem. That business began about 1855. The big start for these guys was getting one of their ranges into Delmonico's in New York City back in the day. With the depression coming on in the early 30s, almost all of these guys went out of business. That mark had been abandoned. I went out and I re-registered that trademark, making pieces in the same vein and same quality as they did. This is an old Du Parquet DH&M piece that says the Ambassador Hotel, Ambassador New York. I'd put this at, at about 1920. Gorgeously big rivets, about the size of a quarter. Classic American cookware from that era. The teardrop, this was a very French style of end of the handle for for hanging it up. All of those elements inspired my designs. It was definitely to honor the original brand. Restorations will start out looking something, something like this. Having this relined with fresh tin, polished up on the outside, brings it back to be able to use again. These are all individual clients that uh, have sent in their, their pieces. Everybody's got a story about where they got their copper from. Look at this fish poacher. The fish would be sitting on this insert and you'd be able to lift the entire fish. This is an American, early 1900s. Wonderful, large soft pan. Here's another great piece. This is from the Waldorf Astoria when the Waldorf existed where the Empire State Building presently is, and it was torn down in probably the 30s. This is a great piece with a lot of history and a great stamp on it. To find something like this to have in your own kitchen is spectacular. The next step is to line the pan. I need to coat it on the outside with a little bit of whiting, and this whiting is just ground marble. So this is just protection on the outside. Tin is a very soft metal, it can be bent very easily, and it melts at a very low temperature, so it melts at about 470 degrees. The lining is there to separate the acidic foods from the copper. Acidic foods in raw copper are going to leach the copper off of the pan. If we took white vinegar and wiped it on the inside of a raw piece of copper, let it sit for 24 hours and came back the next day, it's gonna give you that green verdigris that you know about copper. You want it to last a long time, so you want to get a thick layer of tin that looks great. And it takes a lot of art and a lot of practice. The back sides have gotten uh, a little tarnished throughout the process. Going to give them a little wash and then we're going to be off to a polish. We've got two different polishing compounds, very similar to sandpaper. This stronger wheel here is going to be first and we're going to be able to take off all of the little micro scratches that we had. The compound is more important than the brushes themselves. A low grit sandpaper takes the material off the pan. And then the final polish. And these are softer. The white one here is a higher grit sandpaper. Takes all the little micro scratches off. This really brightens it up. After a final wash, we'll put a put a logo on it and we'll have a pan ready to cook. When I started getting some press early on in doing this, a couple of the family members contacted me and they were thrilled that I was, I was making pieces again under essentially the, the name of their ancestors. I was thrilled to be able to put that together and, and learn a little bit more about the business from them. You wish that this thing could tell the stories of who cooked in it and what did they cook in it. What was life like in these times? It's a really special pan. I don't know if, if these gentlemen thought that we'd be doing this 100 years later and we are, which is great. I hope 100 years from now there's somebody out there finding my piece and passed down from generation to generation. That's, to me, what these pans should be. 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ng hindi maganda din sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. I love rockets. If you've been around this channel, you know that about me. And today is like the best day ever because we're gonna learn how to build rockets. Just down the road from Huntsville, Alabama, there's a city named Decatur. And in that city, there is a rocket factory owned by a company called United Launch Alliance. And that factory has been cranking out incredibly reliable rockets for years. Because these orbital rockets have some of the same technologies in them as ballistic missiles, the knowledge about how to build them is protected. In the United States, we have a set of regulations called ITAR, International Traffic and Arms Regulations. Because of ITAR, nobody's going to let you walk into a rocket plant with a camera and film things. They can't risk that stuff getting out and breaking the law. So there has to be an incredible amount of trust between the parties that want to film things and the people that own the plant. Thankfully, I was given the opportunity to build that trust with ULA when I went and watched the launch of the Parker Solar Probe and I met the CEO of ULA on the launch pad. If you haven't heard of this, guy, Tori Bruno, then you're in for a treat. He's a legitimate rocket scientist who knows his stuff inside and out. It was at this launch that Tori and I built trust with each other. Like this guy is the real deal. The tour we're about to go on has never been done on the internet. Tori literally takes us right up to the line of what he can show us and all along the way he's answering my technical questions and he's letting me explore the factory. So here we go. Let's take the first ever online tour of the United Launch Alliance rocket factory in Decatur, Alabama with this CEO of ULA, Tori Bruno. Okay, we've got Tori mic'd up now. And you're going to show me the rockets that are fabricated yes. at this facility? Yeah. What do we have here? Okay, so we've got an Atlas V on the side. This is kind of our workhorse, and it's in the five meter payload fairing configuration. So that's what we're talking about here. It also has its uh, SRBs on the side, which is sort of its maximum lift version. When it's got all five of those, we call it the beast. And this is the Delta IV Heavy, and this is what you, you thank you again yeah, of for, course. for letting me participate, <laughs> or at least uh, see the, the Parker Solar Probe yeah, launch. That was fun, huh? And that's fabricated here in Decatur. Yes, yeah, so three core rocket, you know, literally three rockets kind of bolted together. And it is our largest rocket. It's physically the largest rocket in the world right now, and it is what we used for Parker Solar Probe. And this is what I want to talk about. Yeah. This is Vulcan, and this rocket has never flown. Never flown, not yet. And you're going to see the first flight vehicle hardware in the factory being fabricated when we go in there today. Today? Yeah. Okay. So this is our brand new rocket. You can think of it as kind of a derivative of those two in a way. So it'll be large, 5.4 meter diameter, so a little bit bigger than Delta. It can take six SRBs. It's a huge cavernous payload volume for the spacecraft. And this rocket has 30% more lift capability than this big three core monster. So when you say six SRBs, be six of them. Yeah. And that's just to get out of the Earth's gravity yes, well. Yes, right, yeah. exactly. Can we go see the stuff? Yeah, let's go see it. Okay, we're at a rocket factory. Let's do it. <laughs> we're gonna peel off to the right here. Okay. Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the grid here. Yeah, so this is a barrel section from the booster over your head, actually from an atlas. And I'm going to walk you down to the end of the factory where this first gets made. It's the first thing we do. Kind of raw stock comes in the back door, gets machined, puts this curve in it, and then we'll walk you all the way through to a completed version. That's awesome. Okay. So there's something unique about the North Alabama area here. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a little triangle. There's a nuclear power station. There's a, uh, a steel mill, yes, and there's also a rocket factory like in a triangle. That's true. And then you got a river running between them. Yep. And so you can bring in steel, you can make a rocket using the power from the nuclear plant. Yes. Is that why you're here? That's part of why we're here, but it's also because of the talent that we have here with the University of Alabama and the other Alabama universities and the technician programs they have here. You just get an awesome workforce. 
And with the river, which is only a mile from here down Red Hat Road, we have the dock for our rocket ship so we can transport our rockets out to the launch pad. This is the rocket ship Tori's talking about. You see? It says so right on the side. Rocket ship. Rocket ship navigates its way through several rivers up to the Mississippi River, down to the Gulf of Mexico, and then it heads to whatever pad the rockets will launch from. In fact, you should come back sometime and do the ship. Yeah, I should, I should ride on yeah. the ship. Yeah. Is, that, is that a thing? Can that, you do that? Yes, that is a thing. Okay, we're getting on a golf cart and we have to cut cameras because we're going to pass, uh, not secret stuff, but things we can't film, right? Right. Okay, cut the camera off. Okay, we're on the golf cart and... Uh, I've, I've obtained permission to film straight up, so you can't see that, which is pretty neat. Okay, so I can't talk about that right now, can I? No, we can't show it to you, but I can tell you what it is. That's a Delta payload fairing. So one of the smaller versions of the Delta's payload fairing. And then you're passing by a heat shield here that would protect the RS-68 engine uh -huh. from its own plume during flight. Okay. This is almost emotional. <laughs> I mean, you you know what it's like to sit in class and study oh, this yeah, stuff. Sure. And then, because you went to Cal Poly, right? Right. Yeah, so this is me looking at all the stuff I've learned about and finally getting to see it. It's one thing to see it on the pad, but uh, it's almost like a holy experience. Yeah, well, your inside where it's actually happening, all get put together. Okay, it's starting to get the smell of the machine shop, the manufacturing, the, the cooling oil yep. smell. You got it. It's my understanding you're about to show me how to build a rocket from scratch. Yes, I am. Okay, excellent. So we're going to the door, right? Yes, we are. Okay, this is what I wanted to see here at ULA. This is the door. I can't even get, it's a wide angle lens, so that's the door where the material comes in, right? Right, that's where the raw aluminum plate and other materials come in, and then that's, this is the receiving area, and as they move that way, they turn into a rocket. So we're about to build a rocket by going that way in the plant. Exactly. Okay, I'm, I'm game, let's do this. All right, let's do it. Yeah. And this is an active manufacturing facility, so you're just gonna have to deal with the audio. There's a lot of tools <laughs> going on out here. Yeah, sorry about that, but yeah. you know, building rockets. It's good. Oh, wow, that is, that is really, can I go touch that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is a very, very expensive piece that's is that aluminum or stainless that's aluminum aluminum yeah and is that fabricated here locally that's no, important no, we buy yeah so we buy that from a supplier okay and then it's shipped here comes in through the big door if you will and then we machine it down we're going to remove oh more than two-thirds of the material while retaining about 90 percent of the strength in, in certain dimensions right and i will show you that yeah okay got it so this is our raw material and uh we're gonna we're gonna go make a rocket okay rocket. all right and so all this is aluminum that is a all this is aluminum that's a unique dimension you normally don't see plates of aluminum that wide and that long no so we this is actually made especially for us in these dimensions so that we can turn them into the barrel the propellant tanks of the rocket itself okay so so you you're tooling up an entire boundary of some type or a mill a rolling mill a rolling mill okay gotcha so i'm going to show you a couple of different things before we get to the machine so starting here with the raw stock of 7000 series aluminum it will eventually become a round rocket barrel this is just after machining and i wanted to point this out to you because this is our old style of grid that we machine in an ISO grid, and no. you're familiar with what an ISO, ISO grid, grid is, yes. right? So we have isentropic properties when we do the stress analysis, and you can see the triangular patterns in there. That's not actually the ideal pattern for a rocket barrel, but it is what the analytical tools, the finite element analysis tools available to us when we designed Atlas and Delta in the 90s were available to us, and that's why we have that pattern. Vulcan will be better because the tools are better and you'll see the difference when we walk down the line. I, I have never thought about that. So literally, because in the 90s, the FEA analysis could solve a triangle easily. Yes. That's why the ISO grid is a triangle. I would exactly. have never thought that. So yeah. so basically, if I understand correctly, you, you can, can I touch this? Yeah. Touch, I'm gonna yeah. ask you that every time. Yeah, so basically, because you can compute the force coming in one member yep. to a node and the force is coming out the other member, that's how you get arrived at ISO grid. Exactly. Okay. 
Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's sort of an interesting thing in the, in the real world, how the engineering tools that are available dictate the kind of designs that we use. Got it. What's your safety factor on flying here? Oh, so it, you know, it depends on what part of the rocket we're talking about. Anything that would be pressurized when people are around it has a higher safety factor than what is not. But the basic factors we work with in flight are anywhere from 1.1 to never really higher than 1.25. Got it. Yes. I mean, it's very different than like designing a railroad car where your factor of safety might be seven or eight. Oh, no. Yeah. And, and a factor of safety is if you can com compute the stress that the thing will break at, you design it to 1.1 times that. Right. 10% more load carrying capability. And really, a factor of safety is really a factor of ignorance. You have a factor of safety because you're not truly sure what might happen to it in the field. So you give yourself just a little bit more. And you talked about rail. Uh, big tractors are another one where you have big factors of safety, like seven times, 12 times. When we do rockets, we like to keep it closer to like just 10%, maybe 20% because we can't afford the weight. Got it, because, because every extra thousandth of an inch that you put in this webbing here over the course of a huge part like this, you're talking tons on the whole rocket. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And this is a booster plate, and so every seven pounds of that cost me a pound of spacecraft. So how long does it take to machine that? You have the tools here to machine this isogrid. Yeah, this is about a two-day operation altogether. Is this curled like a potato chip in this direction or in this direction? In the long direction. In the long direction. And you're going to see that operation as nice. we walk to the other end. Okay, perfect. That's what the 25-ton brake presses are for. Yeah, because if you're if you're curling along the long direction, you require a tremendous amount of force, and you have to have alignment to keep it straight during the bend. Exactly. Okay. Is that a pressure? vessel? I mean, would that hold pressure or would there be a liner on the inside? It is a pressure vessel, but actually on the booster, because it's liquid propellant, most of the pressure is at the bottom just coming from hydraulic head. We only have a few psi of gas on top to keep the propellant down. It's 10 percent, maybe 20 percent, because we can't afford the weight. This is not something I expected to see. These guys because are every extra thousand of an inch. What are they doing? They that are. So the first thing that happens to those big plates is we plane them. We make them flat. And so these guys are going over an operation that's just been done. They're cleaning it up. They're looking for any imperfections. And what you're going to see in the factory that I think is really cool, you know, we're building rockets for the pinnacle of technology. And you're going to see high-tech robotic operations. But mixed in, you're going to also see craftsmanship with people who are very skilled and have great attention to detail like these guys. They're going to go over every inch of that thing and make sure that the automated machine that planed it didn't leave any features we don't want. So if like a piece of the tool broke or something like exactly. that? Exactly. Chatter, whatever. Yeah, so th are these your fly cutters here? Yeah, basically end mills. Some of them are, are side mills, but yes. Gotcha. Am I allowed to look at this fly cutter? Yeah, yeah. Can go ahead. Sure. Wow. Isn't that cool? I love machining. It's, it's a secret passion of mine. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So you went to Alabama, right? I did. So you guys do a lot of sort of machine shop time in your engineering? Degree? Not a whole lot, but we, we do take a class or two. For my undergrad, I did that. Yeah. But my dad had an old lathe and mill in the garage when I was growing up. Yeah, that's cool stuff. The other thing I'll share with you, you can see all that flow down there. We actually recover all of these chips. So even though we're going to take the majority of the material away by machining it off, subtractive manufacturing, we capture all of it, we send it right back to the supplier, and it comes back to us in a plate, you know, a month later. That's awesome. That, is that coolant? That's coolant, but it's mostly water. Mostly water. So yeah. it is capturing the chips. That's a tremendous amount of water flow. Yeah, well, chips are heavy. <laughs> It's hard to get a scale for that. It's hard to get a scale for that, but that is a lot of fluid. Oh, there's a whole river of coolant there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see it. And are you looking for places where the tooling broke? No, we're looking for chips or debris that may be on it. We only have plus or minus 5,000 on the thickness. Right. So a small chip would be outside of the tolerance. So. Right. Thank you very much. My name's Destin. Jeff. Nice to meet you, Jeff.
humans mission. That's cool. The humans, the human story yeah, is what's yeah. really cool to me. That's amazing. Me too. Here's one that uh, I think this guy's actually running. So you can see way down there where the cutting head is. These are actually the plates for Vulcan Flight, for Vulcan Flight 2. Really? The second Vulcan that'll go. So you know what we ought to do is we ought to like steal you a chip down there. So you'll have a chip from the Vulcan rocket when it goes to space. Can I, can I stick one in my pocket? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna a little sharp. Be careful. I, did, I will be careful. I'll take a little one. Nothing to see here. <laughs> there you go. Chip for Vulcan. Here's your chip. Guard it with your life. All right. All right we're in trouble. But don't tell anybody. We're in trouble. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Tori Bruno said it was okay if I stuck a chip in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so these machines are CNC, correct? Yes. Okay. And and are these specially made machine or are these? Because usually were, you, yeah. you so, don't plane a surface that wide. No, generally when you're in this kind of factory, you're going to see tooling that comes right. from big tooling manufacturers, but it has been designed especially for this application. So all of this is custom stuff. Really? So, for example, the head here is probably normal, but the, the ways on the machine, this is incredibly long for a mill. Yes, exactly. Very, very long and very large. Gotcha. Very, you know, big width. That lets us do more than one plate at a time. So if one of these machines go down, what does that do to you? That would be a big impact, but fortunately we have more than one, so we would always still have the other machines running. And so what would happen is we'd get it fixed and then we would catch up on an off shift. Because I've, I've kept up with your launch record and you always meet schedule. Is, is it because you have redundancy built into this part of the process? That is part of it. So yes, this factory was actually built with the idea in mind of building as many as 40 rockets a year. And so we have so much capacity, it's easy for us to kind of make up for little challenges like that along the way. Because nowadays you fly maybe 12 or 15 times, 15 times a year tops. Right. Okay. So you're not at capacity? No, not even close. But you want to be. This is a commercial yes, for that. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Okay, so that moment right there where Tori Bruno is joking about the capacity of his rocket plant. It reminds me of a... Yeah, so, para sa akin, okay na yan. Okay, so dito sa isa pang subject natin, yung same din yung gagawin natin. Okay, so yun guys. So, napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So, yun yung silby ng one na to. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo sa, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na nating tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkakakat nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makitang kita atin pati sa buhok yan so okay so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari okay yan so pwede namang yan ang gamitin natin 50 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ng hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. Tapos, edit natin. Ayan. 100. Delete. Okay. So, ayan. Automatic, tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para uh, maging white. O clear na clear yung kanyang background. At uh, pwede na tayong mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire okay. Oops Ang kanyang background So, yan Kailangan pantay yung background niya at uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture okay so yan so after that eto ang mga nandito sa labas pwede mo nang i-delete uh, okay so yan okay so okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rush ID dito naman uh, same din uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin pero magtataka ka dito balikat nya merong sumama no? so pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80 or mga 50 70 Hindi pa rin So pwede mga 50 lang Okay Ayan, So para sa akin okay na yan Okay So dito sa isa pang subject natin Yung same din yung gagawin natin So yun guys, so napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So yun yung silbi ng wand na to. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na natin tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkakakat nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makitang kita atin pati sa buhok yan so okay so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari okay yan so pwede namang yan ang gamitin natin 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ang hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. Tapos, edit natin. Ayan. 100. Delete. Okay. So, ayan. Automatic, tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para um, maging white. Clear na clear yung kanyang background. At uh, pwede na tayo mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire okay. Oops Ang kanyang background So, yan Kailangan pantay yung background niya at uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture okay so yan so after that ito ang mga nandito sa labas pwede mo nang i-delete uh, okay so yan okay so okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rush ID dito naman uh, same din uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin pero magtataka ka dito balikat nya merong sumama no? so pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80 or mga 50 70 Hindi pa rin So pwede mga 50 lang Okay Ayan, So para sa akin okay na yan Okay So dito sa isa pang subject natin Yung same din yung gagawin natin So yun guys, so napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So yun yung silbi ng wand na to. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na natin tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkakakat nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makikita ang hita atin pati sa buhok yan so okay so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari okay yan so pwede namang yan ang gamitin natin 50 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ng hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. Tapos, edit natin. Ayan. 100. Delete. Okay. So, ayan. Automatic, tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para uh, maging white. Or clear na clear yung kanyang background. At uh, pwede na tayong mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire okay. Oops Ang kanyang background So, yan Kailangan pantay yung background niya at uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture okay so yan so after that ito ang mga nandito sa labas pwede mo nang i-delete uh, okay so yan okay so okay. meron na tayong dinis na uh, pang rush ID dito naman uh, same din uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin pero magtataka ka dito balikat nya merong sumama no? so pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80 or mga 50 70 hindi pa rin so pwede mga 50 lang ok yan so para sa akin ok na yan ok so dito sa isa pang subject natin yung same din yung gagawin natin So, yun guys. So, napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So, yun yung silbi ng wand na to. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo sa, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na nating tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkaka cut nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makikita ang hita natin, pati sa buhok, yan so, okay so, kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa, sige, try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari, okay, yan so, pwede namang yan, ang gamitin natin, 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ng hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. Tapos, edit natin. Ayan. 100. Delete. Okay. So, ayan. Automatic, tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para uh, maging white. Clear na clear yung kanyang background. Uh, pwede na tayo mag-import ng ating formal attire okay. oops ang kanyang background so yan kailangan pantay yung background nya at uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture okay so yan so after that ito ang mga nandito sa labas pwede mo nang i-delete uh, okay so yan okay so okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rush ID dito naman uh, same din uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin pero magtataka ka dito balikat nya merong sumama no? so pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80 or mga 50 70 hindi pa rin so pwede mga 50 lang ok yan so para sa akin ok na yan ok so dito sa isa pang subject natin yung same din yung gagawin natin So yun guys, so napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So yun yung silbi ng wand na to. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na nating tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkakakat nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makikita ang kita natin pati sa buhok yan so okay so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari okay yan so pwede namang yan ang gamitin natin 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ang hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. Tapos, edit natin. Ayan. 100. Delete. Okay. So, ayan. Automatic, tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para um, maging white. Clear na clear yung kanyang background. At uh, pwede na tayong mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire okay. Oops Ang kanyang background So, yan Kailangan pantay yung background niya at uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture okay so yan so after that ito ang mga nandito sa labas pwede mo nang i-delete uh, okay so yan okay so okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rare ID dito naman uh, same din uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin pero magtataka ka dito balikat nya merong sumama no? so pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80 or mga 50 70 Hindi pa rin So pwede mga 50 lang Okay Ayan, So para sa akin okay na yan Okay So dito sa isa pang subject natin Yung same din yung gagawin natin So yun guys, so napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So yun yung silbi ng wand na to. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na natin tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkaka cut nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makikita ang hita atin pati sa buhok yan so okay so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari okay yan so pwede namang yan ang gamitin natin 50 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ng hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is banan talaga. automatic tanggal na yung uh, background niya ready na siya para uh, maging white or clear na clear yung kanyang background at uh, pwede na tayong mag import ng ating uh, formal attire kanyang background. So, yan. Kailangan pantay yung background niya. At uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture. Okay? So, So after that, ito ang mga nandito sa labas. Pwede mo nang i-delete. Yeah. Okay. So yan. Okay. So okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rush ID. Dito naman. Uh, same din. Uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin. Pero, magtataka ka dito, balikat niya, merong sumama, no? So, pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80. Or, mga 50. 70. Hindi pa rin. So, pwede mga 50 lang. Okay. Para sa akin, okay na yan. Okay? So, dito sa isa pang subject natin, yung same din yung gagawin natin. Okay. So, yun guys. So, napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So, yun yung silbi ng one na to. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo sa, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na natin tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkaka cut nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makikita ang hita natin, pati sa buhok, yan so, okay, so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa, sige, try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung anong mangyayari, okay, yan so, pwede namang yan, ang gamitin natin, 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ng hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. automatic tanggal na yung uh, background niya ready na siya para uh, maging white o clear na clear yung kanyang background at uh, pwede na tayong mag import ng ating uh, formal attire kanyang background. So, yan. Kailangan pantay yung background niya. At uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture. Okay? So, So after that, ito ang mga nandito sa labas. Pwede mo nang i-delete. Yeah. Okay. So yan. Okay. So okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rush ID. Dito naman. Uh, same din. Uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod. Balance na rin. Pero magtataka ka dito balikat niya, merong sumama, no? So, pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80. Or, mga 50. 70. Hindi pa rin. So, pwede mga 50 lang. Okay. Para sa akin, okay, okay, so dito sa isa pang subject natin, yung same din yung gagawin natin. Okay, so yun guys, so napakadaling gamitin ng bid kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay. Yun yung silbi ng one na ito. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na natin tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkaka cut nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang tingin mo, kitang kita natin, pati sa buhok, yan so, okay, so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa, sige, try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung anong mangyayari, okay, yan so, pwede namang yan, ang gamitin natin, 50 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ng hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is bandit talaga. Bandit. Tapos, edit natin. Red. Delete. Okay. So yeah. Automatic. Tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para uh, maging white. Uh, clear na clear yung kanyang background. At uh, pwede na tayo mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire. kanyang background. So, yan. Kailangan pantay yung background niya. At uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture. Okay? So, yan. So, after that, ito ang mga nandito sa labas. Pwede mo nang i-delete. Okay. So, yan. Okay. So, okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rush ID. Dito naman. Uh, same din. Uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin. Pero, magtataka ka dito, balikat niya, merong sumama, no? So, pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80. Or, mga 50. 70. Hindi pa rin. Bro, binata, may asawa. Ilan? <laughs> Yun doon ko. Isa lang. Ilaanak mo. Kayo ako. Dalawang anak mo. Ilan taon yung bunso? Four years old. Pangalan. Eleven. Hindi kita sinusupan. This is for my trabaho. Wala. Ayun na. Pakinig kayo ka muna. Si kapatid. Dalawang anak. Eleven and four years old. Huwag siya. Huwag siya. Gusto ko na ipaliwala sa inyo. Kung yung katulad niya na may anak na dalawa, 11 years old and 4 years old, ang babaeng asawa o anak trabaho, kung yung katulad niya pag namatay, ano na nakikita niyo? Buto o hindi? Buto. Yun ang sinasabi ko, bro. Anong pinakamabilis kong takbo? Para naman sinumagin ka. Hindi ka kita kanina eh. At ako ka eh. Nagbago ka na. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100 at uh, yun lang select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na natin tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang Uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikitan nyo naman yung pagkakakat niya sa ating subject ay talaga namang yung mga kitang kita atin pati sa buhok yan. So, okay. so kung gagawin mo tong 50 halimbawa, sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 si kung ano mangyayari. Okay, yan. So, po naman yan, ang gamitin natin, 50. Okay. 
Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na natin tanglin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa Pwede namang yan, ang gamitin natin, 50. 
Pero mayroon pa ako nakikita ang hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang book. So, ang gagawin din natin is 100 talaga. automatic tanggal na yung uh, background niya ready na siya para white and clear na clear yung kanyang background at uh, pwede na tayong mag import pwede na nating tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa hi white ay talaga naman okay okay pati sa okay uh, maghilaw na kayo sa family ninyo Gagawin mo itong 50 Ay, hindi ako sa Pilipinas Okay, sige, try natin sa akin Ay, yata yung mukha eh Gulit ako nga din, hindi, pero pagsumasabay ko 
Automatic, tanggal na yung uh, background niya. Ready na siya para uh, maging white. Clear na clear yung kanyang background. At uh, pwede na tayong mag-import ng ating uh, formal attire. kanyang background. So, yan. Kailangan pantay yung background niya. At uh, walang ibang part na madilim para magawa natin ng maayos yung uh, yung kanyang ID picture. Okay? So, yan. So, after that, ito ang mga nandito sa labas. Pwede mo nang i-delete. Okay. So, yan. Okay. So, okay. meron na tayong malinis na uh, pang rush ID. Dito naman. Uh, same din. Uh, puti na rin yung kanyang likod balance na rin. Pero, magtataka ka dito, balikat niya, merong sumama, no? So, pwede natin bawasan to ng mga, mga 80. Or, mga 50. 70. Hindi pa rin. So, pwede mga 50 lang. Okay. Para sa akin, okay na yan. Okay? So, dito, sa isa pang subject natin, yung same din yung gagawin natin. Okay. So, yun guys. So, napakadaling gamitin ng wand kapag ang ating subject ay may pantay na likod na background. Okay? So, yun yung silbi ng one na to. Guys, ngayon ituturo ko sa inyo yung paggamit ng simpleng magic wand sa pagtanggal ng background ng inyong uh, subject. Okay? So, just click nyo lang yung magic wand. Then, uh, yung tolerance, gawin nyo so, ilagay nyo sa 100. At, uh, yun lang. Select nyo sa isang color dito sa background nya uh, just one click lang ng ating one, pwede na natin tanggalin yung background ng ating uh, subject okay so yun ang yun ang uh, kagandahan dito sa ating one, tikita nyo naman yung pagkakakat nya sa ating subject ay talaga namang makita ang hita atin pati sa buhok yan so okay so kung gagawin mo tong 50 alamawa sige try natin sa 50 lang 50 let's see kung ano mangyayari okay yan so 
Pwede namang yan, ang gamitin natin, 50. Pero, meron pa akong nakikita ang hindi maganda dun sa bandang part ng kanyang buhok. So, ang gagamitin natin is 100 talaga.